Well, hello and a warm welcome. Well, uh, with a higher turnout, <laughs> uh, why are we doing this? Because I wanted to provide an introduction to the topic that we will talk about over the next 30 to 40 minutes. And then my two esteemed colleagues, or rather Martin Wilke of AZ and Christian Weiland of my view, will then take over and demonstrate the system live yesterday and today. We've heard many visionary things, what's possible with AI. We've looked at integration systems, how systems talk to each other. And we thought, why not go one step back and look at uh, how catalog production works with Print Comet and the PIM system, in this particular case, the MyView system in detail. And we would like to show this, um, how a page layout works uh, for a main catalog um, in reality. We will not, of course, uh, set the 500 pages here because it is not that fast <laughs> after all. But uh, maybe we can provide you with some interesting insights into our work, the concepts we've pursued, and maybe uh, you'll find some take-home lessons. And we would be happy if you felt well informed when you leave this room afterwards. A few words on my view, maybe. We're a PIM manufacturer, come from the center of East Westphalia. We're located in Buren near Paderborn and uh, we've been in the business since 2004 and have looked at uh, organizing your product data and the publication of this product data. We have two core products, the PIM system, X Media, and XOM, uh, so we also master abbreviations. Um, this is the component when you uh, focus on platforms and the integration of data. And I don't want to say much more about our company to kick off. What do we do? Well, what every PIM system does, we collect data and try to publish these and distribute them uh, among channels and to always deliver the right data. We have uh, outlined three core areas where we feel that these are three columns that you have to look at. But uh, we have many standard export formats uh, in order to uh, export to marketplaces, uh, retailers, uh, portals or platforms, be it uh, data by ET in the ECAT format or special formats such as Relux or Dialux for lighting manufacturers. This is for handing uh, over planning data. And the second column is, of course, the integration of data data in apps for online catalogs, be it a web shop or a sales app that you want to generate internally. This is nothing new. We also do this. And today we will deal with print publications, templates and sets of rules. I and Christian uh, does this almost exclusively at our company. I've also looked at this in detail over the past few years. Uh, as to how beautifully and efficiently you can pre-configure data in such a fashion that uh, they can be easily processed with print commit and that you quickly arrive at your result, a brochure, a leaflet, a flyer, or whatever. There are different uh, requirements for different media, of course, and we will drill a little deeper now. But before that, I would like to hand on the uh, baton to Martin, who will actually talk about uh, the project and the hard set company, Martin Wilke. Uh, uh, since uh, 1991, I've been employed with a um, manufacturer that is now 155 years old. We are a manufacturer of premium tools, hand tools, and have... Uh, since uh, 1996 have used a PIM system. Just briefly on the company, we have four uh, factories in Germany, 5,500 products uh, for the HZ brand plus one subsidiary with, with another 3,800 products. Then in-house production is as high as 75% made in Germany. And the final um, uh, articles, I mean, well, whatever, um, trade fairs, of no interest to you now. What is of interest now is uh, the PIM database. 
as I said, since 1996. Our then um, head of uh, IT had the idea, well, we should automate before we uh, set it uh, traditionally in Quark Express and manually each time, of course. In 1996, a, a service provider was uh, uh, recruited um, who was uh, who converted this catalog into digital data. This service provider was also commissioned to uh, transfer this data into a catalog uh, to get a Quark Express uh, um, uh, product. Uh, normally, we publish the catalog on the 1st of January. This one didn't. Um, and the uh, CEO approached our marketing head, the then marketing, and said, well, we need it slowly but surely now. But this was three months too late. Well, uh, this should uh, sound familiar to each and everyone who is starting with this topic. Now we've made some progress in between the then database in 2002 was replaced by a follow-up model. We talked to many, many competitors and then picked my view. And Thomas already said it a minute ago. It was a very young company. I suppose we were one of the first customers with for my view. Yes, Hazet has customer number three, I think. But what is really, really important, we're still together. We have never been uh, sorry about this step. The MyView company has really fulfilled all of our requirements, and we do have many requirements, and they've done so reliably. Right now, as Thomas said it, uh, we're actually uh, now enhancing with my view XOM, so the next online catalog planned for the second half of the year will then also be based on this new technology. In 2003, this catalog was generated uh, released in uh, 1996. We had roughly 3,000 articles. Now we've grown. Uh, we're at 5,500 catalog articles now. The catalog is um, produced in 11 or is managed in 11 languages uh, and, uh, and up to date. The catalog is basically a waste or side product. Uh, what used to be the, uh, the main product now is a side product because we actually managed it with a media neutral database and the SAP system and my view together are the central data tools for us to uh, uh, export our data be it BMA CAD or in, in a dozen other formats I would have to look it up but we have over 600 jobs that are handled by the my job uh, my view job center today this is a fully automatic process. Uh, we no longer interfere unless there's a little hiccup, but there hardly is. The current catalog uh, that we want to talk about today in the version 2023 has 536 pages. We have roughly 30 language and price uh, variants. And we not only have product pages, we also have so-called uh, advertising pages, teaser pages. And these texts are also completely generated by my view. And uh, with some pages, not for all pages, we have an automation uh, level of 99%, we would estimate. And considering all of the special requests, uh, this is a very, very high percentage. For your information, I the InDesign file has, has 15 levels to it. And from the editor's deadline to the finished product, um, to, to uh, shipping the publish the uh, printed uh, uh, catalog it takes uh, four months so the print shop needs about one month then uh, reiterative uh, proofreading uh, loops it's a highly efficient process and I'd like to hand over to Christian now now comes the exciting part because we said well presentations are boring let's have a look how it will hopefully work live and christian is responsible for this maybe i uh, should add i am aware of all of these presentations where all of a sudden almost by witchcraft a uh, page pops up no what christian will demonstrate in a minute is 100 percent live
on myself. Uh, f um, since 2015, I've been working for my view and in, in project management there. And uh, I'm a responsible for automated uh, uh, setting with Print Comet and FOP. So the generation of data sheets via a FOP processor and in design JavaScript. So this is my hobby horse, basically. And you will see many InDesign scripts because the catalog it does have manual pagination. Uh, the the special requests because everything is squeezed so together we try to save space on the pages and this is why a high automation degree is um, hard to imagine maybe if I AI improves um, it will probably render me superfluous I don't hope so but um, well I'll connect to our print server now this is an in-house development. This is where we introduce our XML uh, files from the PIM system, which I select here. And what I get is the products that I see. I simply create a page now. This is a sample page. And just select a product and uh, build my page layout. I do hope that it's going to work this time and the computer will not crash. It's pretty speedy and even charts, uh, pre-configured um, uh, tables are generated and we made a clear distinction here, a separation. We have InDesign for pagination but the tables were pre-calculated and this is why we do not use a live query in our system. We have modules, so you can have the tables configured, you could say I want to mix product data with accessories, article data, uh, interim texts and so on and so forth and we will look at this in detail a little later and what I get is the structure delivered by the system as you can see here. Here you see one with a piece list, a parts list, or um, parts that only go with this article. And the structure is really generated by our system. And this is a real parts list. It is a real parts list. And we will have a look at the parts list, a big parts list, a little later. And this is all done with one template. And the template uh, simply specifies the design. Let's look at the corresponding template. Yes, you can see it here. And this is what I have to do in InDesign. The only thing that is left. Thomas, briefly on the structure of our system. Well, there is a pain point because we've collected so many product data. They're good and correct. Somebody has released them. And then Martin Wilke or his product manager says, well, draw up a table grouped by whatever. And then these three technical data should be included. Next time it should be 10 and it should always look nice. Uh, as, as nice as a technical uh, parts table can look. To put it like this, this is of course a technical catalog um, that requires technical parameters. Yesterday we talked about uh, pants, uh, pantyhoses and uh, uh, gossamer tights. This is maybe a little more uh, open to design uh, for such a, a page layout. This is probably not so much um, in focus for spanners. Um, more important is to see whether the set of spanners really fits my needs in my workshop. In summary, we uh, would have many, many tables using the Comet uh, table configurator, but we said, no, we'll do it the other way around, because here it is about collecting data. And this should be the sovereignty of the PIM system. This is what we're expert at. We know the context. Uh, this is the article. Uh, this is linked with these accessories or five articles that form part of a group, share the same characteristic. And this is why I can group these articles so that um, we give the definition and we can configure which information is actually exported from which uh, item. As Christian said, there are also uh, rough 
uh, designed tables that we hand over to Print Comet. And that's the nice thing on the design side of things, that with one template <laughs> we can uh, display almost all of the tables. This table looks pretty small, but it had different areas. Um, there are matrix, uh, line items, then there's one area for the technical data export. And on the right hand side, you can see the price header. So this will probably be the line item for the prices. And inside the uh, lines, you can see one, two, three, and at the bottom you read data. So these are the format placeholders uh, designed in InDesign. When I receive a marker and export, oh, your group one, and go for the reference line. and uh, insert the data here. And this is how this table can expand in height and in width. You have to believe it now. Um, this is a very easy table with an underlying set of rules, of course, but we just have it once. And you also have to believe this right now. Um, so we allow you to configure this content in our system. This is embedded, so to speak. And we deliver a standard Comet project at the same time with 20 uh, placeholders for charts, 20 for text, uh, 20 for whatever. So if you buy it from us, you can get started right away. And 90% of the customers um, can do quite a bit with that. They have to understand the in uh, the correlations, but there's no huge ramp up needed. Uh, where do I get the data from? How should I uh, program the placeholders? I think we're pretty successful in offering our customers this. This is very ge generic. This is the drawback. It says text 01, but I embed the project, um, then add the text, uh, highlight this and say text 1. With a table, is it, it's a little more complicated. I uh, design a table. This is the area for the table. Yeah, it's stupid because it's a header line. So without the column and with the first line, this is basically my di design area. I uh, actually generate a, a table and the first line is the control line and the first column as well. So if there's a characteristic or a feature and this uh, actually appears in a uh, delta uh, line, then the system will follow this design recommendation. And this is how I can design a whole table. This is a one on one table. There is a rule saying there's certain uh, charts that c can be, um, or oh, certain numbers can be adjusted to the width of the table. Of course, this is not uh, um, a block configuration yet, but you can work with it. Now, when we believe uh, Martin Wilke, he said uh, that the automation degree is 99%. Well, this depends on how you look at it. The pagination is the way it is. Whole blocks are embedded in the two columns. But Hardset is, of course, an economical company. And they say, well, we want to optimize this even further. And now we're in this tension field. Uh, do we go for fully automatic uh, optimization or do we allow Christian to have a look? And um, at this point, um, the power of the InDesign uh, scripts comes into play because Chris, Christian has built several scripts and can then do the finishing, the pagination, which we do manually for a number of reasons. And this allows him, this feature allows him to do this quickly. I mentioned one problem, the, the uh, uh, figures are not aligned. Hatset, of course, wants this to be aligned by the comma. Then here we've got uh, text too long. Then there's a range that doesn't look attractive. So this is uh, um, a script that I need to finish. And uh, this is column has now been uh, aligned and now you can see that uh, the numbers have been aligned as well. It is very smart. The uh, columns look optically the same. So the system really looks for the biggest space and then aligns the rest accordingly.
and the tables look very balanced. What uh, the system also does, uh, it tags the price. Uh, he tags the price with a condition, um, which gives me the version without prices. There are even scripts uh, where uh, I can add um, prices. Um, there is a German catalog with Swiss francs. Then I create a second condition and I can change over uh, from Euro to Swiss francs. So there's one level that uh, gives me three price versions and by uh, just switching over I have these three created basically in one step. Well, I wanted to show you how I do the pagination. If I did it manually, it would take me quite a long time. But I do. Of course you have to uh, slide objects. Uh, I've learned it and I like to do it. And so let's do it. I simply slide objects and I've got uh, scripts with uh, actually uh, commands. And uh, for instance, all of the articles on this page have been grouped and I can select them and say, well, uh, collect this in one column. So now they're in one column. Then there is, a, this is HZ specific and this is why we do manually. The item doesn't fit. You could actually include a filler, but when I do it a hundred times, then this uh, um, uh, catalog will actually go up from 536 to probably 800 pages. Well, if I do that, uh, certainly so. And this is why there are also scripts available that uh, help me in the pagination here. Mm -hmm. Well, the head is repeated, the table is uh, replaced, relocated. This is not very attractive, but it is uh, extremely useful and to save space, of course. And then I would go from there. Again, I copy the one from that page and uh, copy it, uh, uh, my, do drag and drop. This could be a nice fit. So... Now, on the one hand, I would have to compensate for the extra room, and this is why I enlarge the spanner. Well, I won't win a, a beauty contest with this page now in these few minutes. But I could say, well, this could be a nice fit, but there is one uh, specific case. Double headings are actually... Um, hidden. So I've got the uh, 450N group twice and double open and spanner set. There's also a script available for this to uh, hide the double heading. And you can see the second, the duplicate header was actually hidden. And between the article blocks, you always have to have three millimeters and you've got the same script. So below the image and above the image, the text is spread. And I could probably live with this page. I would probably uh, slightly set it back and forth, but this is how you create a page. And when, you, when you're in, once you're in, um, it's pretty fast until you reach the end of the chapter and you see that you need a filler um, to push uh, the article to the very end. If, if it's supposed to look nice, yeah, then you do the, such a thing because you're always in this tension field, the 80-20 rule, 80% 80 are automated, the data is correct, and for the remaining 20% in principle, um, well, lots of it of the 20% is done by algorithms, but um, I would try to use this for setting page setting right away. But then I end up with very complex rules. And when I actually adjust the setting screw, then all of a sudden this blows up my whole layout and things happen that you haven't expected. But at the end of the day, Hazet and Christian are faster this way. This has really proven to be the most efficient way for finishing. I can also give you figures for this. Again, you, you have to believe me the figures, but I looked them up.
So um, this helps you to set the page very quickly. Just imagine the whole thing is set, then you do the proof proofreading and somebody says, okay, freeze now and let's introduce the languages. Hard set has the big benefit that uh, on a cyclical basis this data is being translated. I think on a monthly or by weekly basis uh, the uh, texts are transported or exported from PIM to the translation um, service uh, and, and the job control center. Uh, then this is translated, hot folder uh, again and back to the system. So this means that Hazet is very current. Once uh, you've frozen it, you actually uh, release a delta, then the last few um, corrections or revisions must be translated or an article that a product manager has inserted last minute, but you're very fast. The first translations arrive after three or four days and then you can release in English or French and, and then you set the languages, the language versions. This is a Schwarz uh, change, so all uh, languages in one document. And we only work with this, and this is uh, why we set it this way. So this is only the German content and no more colors. And then we export it from the system, uh, which place are does ought to be exchanged. Uh, we will want to exchange this. And then instead of DE, German, I select French. And then let's have a look whether this works. So let's go for French now. It's pretty quick, thanks to Comet. And that was it. And the page is set. Well, I would uh, suppose um, some with some pages it, it not always works because when you've done it for a number of years, you know how long languages are, how much space they need. And this is why we adjust the frames to the text length and it usually fits. And this means that we have a second language available now. With my uh, old computer, it took me uh, eight hours for such a language version. So just the product pages with revision, four hours, but the table of contents uh, requires some manual work. A few things are still manual because there's no way to automate these processes. But with the proofreading, with uh, two or three loops, plus the print PDF and the plotter revision, I'd say 12 hours per language. And this was basically it on the pagination. I now have one more table, a range table to show uh, what Comet can do in our system. It takes a little longer for the page to show up. So export range. Let's set the page because it takes a little longer because it's a little more complex. And you will see the relations to the parts lists in various dimensions. Martin is, of course, always happy when you not only buy a, a single um, socket with a bit, but a whole box, a whole set. And you want to know what's inside. This is uh, what the data looks like that has been exported, but there's still many duplicates um, because we can't get it out of the system in a different manner. But again, there is a script available for this. This takes a little longer because it scales the images via a list. Sounds strange. It was some manual work, but less than you might think because uh, there are many duplicates in the ranges. I have a workshop trolley that has the same insert or tray with the same spanners and this is why they're all in the um, parts list. So I went through this manually once. These bits have to have the height, so and so. So this is a text list that is processed with the information. Uh, when a new image is included that's not part of the list yet, is bigger than the others. This would be a great job for AI. Yeah, that would be fantastic. And here you can 
yeah, this looks very tidy. This would be such a 99% page. There's still room, some room available, but it's too little to add a filler. I'd say this page is ready. I would, uh, I could submit it to Martin Wilke, and he wouldn't, he would not beat me up. <laughs> On the data, let's have a closer look here. Well. Yeah, let's reorganize this slightly and uh, look at our system at the same time. So this main article is the uh, 0-717. Yes, this is uh, historically grown article numbers. Let's see whether it works because I'm using this uh, in extremely fast Wi-Fi here of the Mülheim venue. So the system is actually accessing our Remscheid based database uh, live. But the problem is now our database, but the Wi-Fi connection here in the in the venue. As you can see, there is a parts list. There is a parts list attached to this article, and these are those inlays. Oh, the troughs, um, the uh, 16375 uh, slash 56. And our system manages to collect the inlays, but we can go even deeper. Give me the parts list of this item, and then also give me the parts list of this article and uh, show it and display it. This uh, a tr a tray contains the uh, socket for a bit, 850, 8501, or 850 in this first case, and you can look it up. And I'll jump to this uh, tray for the workshop trolley. Oh, and so speedily. Well, at this point, it would have been easier to show a chart, a PowerPoint, or use uh, use a cable, cable-based Wi-Fi, or cable-based internet connection, rather. What uh, Christian is currently demonstrating is this multi-stage uh, display of parts lists because I this is my trolley with the uh, complete assortment. It has a number of uh, trays and the trays contain a set number of tools. So I just uh, process this once and then place it with the workshop trolley. And now you've got the parts list. I open it and this again takes some time and then you see what happens. Um, it manages individual items. You've got the 150 slash 4 slash 5.5. So the individual sizes of uh, this uh, spanner are shown here and you can of course copy this. Uh, the system collects the uh, tools, the um, sockets, the bits, and then actually shows it for the 850. And here you can see it. These are the individual um, sockets for bits. Um, so 850 is the article number with the sizes 4, 5, 5.5. And this is the great thing about the article numbers with HZ. You can really see the sizes. And this is the next group. This is the article group 8501 and different sizes from 3 to 8 all the way down. And then you've got the 8503. This would be the next bit. And this way we can actually uh, look at a complete range uh, and disseminate this. This is the underlying logic. And what you also see is the nice pictograms that we include. And we manage this with the uh, article itself, the product group has uh, this information of the hexagon socket spanner. This is the profile. And we manage this as a text and is then actually translated into a symbol. And you can exactly see uh, that you can actually uh, work with the 6.3 spanner and uh, the uh, corresponding socket. I think 
that was the insight we wanted to, to provide you with. I hope uh, you found it just as exciting as I did or do when I watch Christian. If there are any questions, welcome. The uh, the compila compilation of the templates. We always have the problem on the design side um, is uh, what you want to do with the table. I can uh, actually configure this to a certain degree, but from a certain degree, things simply happen. I get a template generated. How many possibilities do I have to build the templates in InDesign or write scripts? Or is it only offered as a service? No, no, no. Um, uh, we, as I said, can do it ourselves. But uh, uh, we have Christian with a bigger know-how and we've commissioned him therefore. And he has actually taken over programming the templates for us. But I can intervene through the uh, my view itself and I also can access the print server and uh, do templating. Um, I'm the team head for professional services, I forgot to mention this, so I'm aware of uh, many print projects for our customers and um, uh, the good cooperation counts. When both sides understand what's really going on, of course we can build you templates, <laughs> we make money on that, but this is what happens, what you said, you don't have the proper understanding what you can do with them and this is why we love to do this jointly, of course we have to offer for you some, some uh, upfront service because you have to understand what we're trying to do. But our aim is once we've finished the initial project that the customer understand exactly what's happening under the hood, so to speak. But maybe not down to the latest, through the last semicolon in the script, but at least know your way. Let me briefly uh, comment on this. The templating as such is very simple. It is done in InDesign. I open the text frame, insert the frame, highlight it and say your placeholder number one. And we say in the data, okay, this is the name, placeholder one. And in two minutes, I've uh, generated a template with a name. On the background briefly, for our other customers, our uh, intention is to hand over the projects entirely. We have many customers, they only give us a call when they uh, encounter problems. Hardset is a special case for us. We offer it as a service, okay, I've been doing this since the uh, second catalog for Hardset and this has become, this become an established uh, routine because I used to be a setter, a print setter and, and produced catalogs and I've known uh, Mr. Wilker Martin to be present for 20 years or so um, since I was trained. Um, I, I've known Hardset. And what you briefly mentioned before it is a little abstract uh, to have these placeholders, uh, to assign them. Uh, it reads uh, uh, text01 as a show value and I have to know text01 is my basic text. And then there is text02, this is the footnote for instance. Uh, you could give other names of course. But um, you have to think in abstract terms and I drew up a chart for this and this is why I know that text01 is the basic text. But you could also rename it. But this is, hierarch uh, this is uh, historically grown and um, we can also influence the placeholders but we have the standard project and we just push in the data and I can also process data uh, files and then I have other uh, names. If my boss says I have to place this, uh, if he sees the video, yes, he talked about standard, fine. On the customer side, I can only subscribe to this. Is it print commit or is it InDesign? It's uh, JavaScript for InDesign. InDesign offers these uh, sh um, sample uh, scripts. Of course, you can use these and build a C script uh, as rules and they also work with um, uh, commit. 
I want to integrate them so that others can also use them. But once uh, you uh, look at the table configuration elements to rewrite this into uh, a sales script out of Java is quite a bit of work. And uh, this is basically an extension to InDesign. And we offer this as a service, of course. If somebody says, I don't want to push this button 800,000 times, then you can also write a script, of course. And um, and depending on on, on, on on what it is, it's faster than uh, pushing the button 800,000 times. Other questions? Yes, please. No microphone. It's not the print suite. Uh, did I initially mention this? This is a print server. This is our server. And we only use the plugins, the desktop plugins. And by so we access our print server at Tomcat and uh, um, it uh, actually prepares the data, processes the data. Well, then, if there are no other questions, then the three of us would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you, Shun. Thank you, Shun. Wenn jemand Interesse hat, ich möchte ihn nicht mit nach Hause <lacht> schleppen. <lacht>